Good evening, parents and students. My name is Rob Spees, the principal here at Fulton High School, and I want to welcome you to our Chromebook deployment for uh, uh, 2016. I'm very excited about this initiative and the difference it can make to help increase our edu educational opportunities and outcomes for our students. The objectives we're going to try and cover today is to provide a context for students and parents about with our one-to-one -one technology initiative, to inform students and parents about the guidelines, expectations, and policies surrounding the use of the devices, and to communicate information concerning digital citizenship and internet safety. Knox County Schools is committed to the concept of creating a technology-supported personalized learning environment to meet each student's individual instructional needs. <clears throat> and Fulton High School is, a cohort, is part of a cohort of schools that have the capacity and commitment to successfully implement a one-to-one -one technology initiative to support personalized student learning. What personalized student learning is, basically, is that each kid's getting what they need when they need it. Not just one size fits all education, but we're trying to chunk it down so everybody's getting what they need to, to fill in gaps they may have or to push and excel students to a higher level. Today's uh, learners, as we know, have grown up in the digital world. They've always had cell phones, computers, video entertainment, iPods, and the internet, and they've never seen a TV that doesn't have a remote control. Our children are hyper communicators, goal planners, multitaskers, and experts at figuring out how to use technology and they're very active learners. So therefore because they're such active learners we've got to change what we're doing in the classroom to, to, to engage them and meet them. Why are we going this way? Because it's the right thing to do. It's the best way to, in, to increase our student engagement, making sure their educational is relative and critical for our schools to continue to effectively and fully prepare our students for colleges and careers and the leaders of tomorrow. We can't keep um, teaching students in an environment where they have to leave their devices outside the building, they have to unplug when they come in the building. In the, when they leave high school, they move into a technology-based society, and we got to give our kids the skills and opportunities to be successful in high school using those. At this point, you should have two pieces of paper. One is the white packet of technology device procedures and expectations, and then the second is a yellow piece of paper called the technology device agreement. You need to check on the device agreement, the yellow sheet, make sure your information is correct, and make, if it's not, make any corrections as needed. The device that your kids will be getting into today is an 11-inch Dell Chromebook. You're going to get both the Chromebook and the charger. Um, it, it, if you look at the, the picture here, we're getting the model on the right with the blue trim. It uh, has an 11.6-inch screen and weighs about 2 and 3 fourths of a pound. Um, not real heavy device. They're very rugged, very durable. They're built for um, education. They're built to be um, for students to use them. A couple terms we're going to talk about throughout the day. The night you may hear is a, a full user versus a day user. A full user is where we want all of our kids to be so they can take the device home and continue the learning outside the school walls. The full user, when they sign for the uh, uh, the agreement had, takes full responsibility for the device all the time. Not just when you're here at school, you and your student take responsibility for that device 24 hours a day, 365 days, well excuse me, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week um, until you turn that device back in. The day user would check in and out that device each day. So basically when they arrive at school they would check their device out and then at the end of the day they will check their device back in. And it um, that student and parent takes on the responsibility for the device while they have it here at the school day. Um, what that means is if, if the student causes damages to the device while they have it, you're responsible for that. And if accidents do happen, and then we, we go through a process to say, is this an accident? And should the, should the school cover this damage? Or is it um, uh, misuse or mistreatment? And should the student be responsible for, for any damage that may occur? Both groups, whether you're a full user or a day user, need to get through the deployment process and signs the paperwork and turns that back in at the end. And we'll make a note on your paperwork whether you're a day user or a full user. So let's look at the white packet, the procedures and expectations. We're going to run through some of these, the high points, and this is your, this is your copy to take with you, so feel, feel free to write on that. We're on page four. Says the care of the district technology device is the student's responsibilities. The student should not lend their device to another person. What happens is when you give that device to someone else, now you leave yourself open for whatever they may do to it, uh, any kind of damage, or as well as where they what they're accessing with that. You should never leave your device unattended. Know where it is at all times. 
you need this is an important piece here students need to charge their device every night before they get home when they get home so it's fully charged when they arrive to when they arrive to school each day well as we're moving to more and more technology that's got to be charged up failure to bring the device um, or other class materials does not release a student from responsibility for his or her work. You're still responsible for the, for the work that's done, whether you brought your device or not you left your device at home, so please bring your device. This top one is a something we all need to be on the same page with. The Chromebook is property of Knox County Schools, and it can be collected and inspected at any time. Students have no right to privacy for any material on a district technology device. It is not the student's device, it is the county's device that the student is taking care of. So anything that's on the device, we can look at it at any time. So if, if, if a student is doing all the right things, that's not a problem. Um, but we know sometimes teenagers uh, tend to make um, not so great decisions. We want to make sure that we're all on the same page, that we don't, that we adults in our building can ask for the device and look at it at any time, and the student needs to comply with that. Each Chromebook has a unique serial number and asset tag. You should not remove or modify the tag. You should not draw on uh, the device. I, I'm okay if you put a sticker on the back of it so you know you, which one's yours. Um, but there's no tampering will be permitted with the device. If the students, it is the student's responsibility to back up projects and content. You may want to uh, purchase a flash drive to save things or store it in the cloud. The bulk of our uh, um, work will be saved through their students Google Drive that is provided through the through the Chromebook uh, which is a, the Google Drive is a is a cloud storage uh, system um, so where their files very few of the files will live on the device mostly live uh, in the cloud so that that's a good thing be, be easier for students to keep up with their work if the device is not working or damaged you should report the problem immediately to the help desk our help desk will be located in room 309. Zach James is our school technician, and he can help us um, get those things uh, squared away quickly. If your device is lost or stolen, you should report the loss immediately to administrator. If it's stolen off campus, you should um, complete a police report. Okay, On campus, communicate to administrator. Off campus, file a police report. Students are responsible for using the technology device according to school and district policies and procedures. Device care, flipping to page five. Students should never pick up the device by the lid, and you should always close the technology before you pick it up. Okay, so you don't want to be carrying the device around by the screen. Each student should be expected to use the school issued prevent protective covering well we're not issuing you one there because the, the device itself is um, ha, kind of has a built-in cover be sure when you are carrying it to and from school that you keep it in a backpack or a bag or some other kind of carrying case uh, best way to break it is dropping it on the on the out in the courtyard um, and also if you keep it in that backpack don't forget it's in there because what will happen at times is you'll throw your backpack around like you always have and it leads to breakage so please be careful with those. Uh, and don't step on your backpack. Again, that's an easy way to break your device. Uh, when you put it, I would, I would advise you to get a backpack with a, a tablet or laptop sleeve built into it so you can slide it in there so there's got a little more cushion there to it. And you don't want to, um, you want to make sure that you keep anything out of the ports like pencil lead or other debris from jamming the, the, the USB port or the charging port on it. You want to be sure you keep your device at room temperature. For example, if it's 18 degrees outside tonight, don't leave the device in your car. Uh, exposure to extreme cold as well as extreme heat car, uh, inside your car during the summer or the, during the, the August, September, May can get very hot. Don't leave it inside your car then. Um, it can damage the device. Liquids and food need to stay away from the technology device. Do not use cleaner sprays or alcohol, ammonia, or abrasives on the Chromebooks. Try cleaning it with a salt, lint-free brush. Um, do, be careful where you're, where you're putting it. Don't put it somewhere where someone can step on it or slip on it. This device, this Chromebook, it will be yours for the remainder of the time you're here at school, so take care of it. At the end of the year, you will check this back in in May, and then August, you will check out the same device. So if you 
beat it up real bad, you're going to have a real beat up Chromebook for, for the next until you graduate. When you do graduate, you've got to return those back in. We cannot sell those to you or send those with you as graduation gifts. They, they remain property of Knox County Schools. On page six, there is the repair and replacement guidelines. What breaks down the difference between theft, non-preventable damage, and preventable damage or negligence. Basically, if someone steals it, it, uh, you need to tell an administrator, file a police report, and then the student become a day user during the time of the, during the investigation. Um, if it turns out that it is stolen, then we can issue you a, a new device. Non-preventable damage. Uh, basically, this is where there's an, some type of accident, and if we determine that is a truly an accident, that the student was not at fault there, then we'll give you a new device. If it's preventable damage or negligence, uh, the parent and the student is responsible for the device and therefore the cost. Administrator will investigate that and make it. We'll make a determination uh, if it's uh, preventable or not. And then during that time, you'll become a day user until you pay for that. And then once you do pay the repair costs, we'll give you a. Um, we'll replace the device for you. The cost for re repairs um, for a full replacement is two hundred fifty dollars. If you break your display, it's $135. If you damage the, one of the headphone jacks or charging ports, it's up to $70. The chargers are $25, and the top case is $70. Hear me on this one. The biggest thing you will struggle to keep up with is your charger. Okay? We do not have extra chargers. They're $25 a piece. So if you need, uh, if you've lost your charger, Okay, it will cost you $25 for a new one. Do not lend your charger out to other folks. Do not leave it in the gym. Take good care of your charger. Okay, that's the thing that will that will get uh, damaged the quickest and be lost the quickest. Okay, internet safety. Obviously, the internet is a great teaching device, great resource, but it's also can be uh, it opens the, the students to a world of information, both good and bad. While they're here at, at school. Uh, teachers will be charged with monitoring student internet use in class. That does not mean we know what every student is on all the time. We'll have one teacher in the room with 25 to 30 students. The teacher will be expected to uh, circulate and monitor what's going on, but uh, the student has to take the responsibility to make sure they're making good decisions. Uh, we've begun uh, teaching students about digital citizenship, and we'll continue that over the next few weeks. Uh, you see there's a website there for more at-home support. Basically, commonsensemedia.org has a lot of information on digital citizenship. I, and I would recommend, once you get your device home, uh, that you use it to access some of these uh, resources. Um, while students are here at school, their device goes through our statewide filter. So we can block social media and other sites. Filters are uh, it filters websites based on keywords. Okay, so it is a relatively safe environment while they are here at school. However, um, when you go home and you go off of our uh, network, it is no longer filtered. It is wide open internet. So you, as a parent, need to be aware of that and um, to be sure you are taking proper precautions to make sure you know what your kids are doing on the on the websites. Uh, or we have a learning management system that we use for students to submit work and get information and teachers to upload modules and videos um, to post assignments. Uh, and we've started using this over the last few years as well. Your students should be familiar with it. Um, they'll be, become much more familiar with it. All, every class has an account where students will be given assignments, take assessments, and submit their work. And parents will have an opportunity to become an observer. You can see what's going on there. And we will talk to you here soon about how you can view your child's work as an observer through Canvas. Some things you need to keep in mind as a parent, monitor your student's home use of internet with the Chromebook. Okay, You may want to set up some parameters. Little Johnny can't go run in his room and shut the door and play on the Chromebook all day long. Okay, You may want to have, you know, sit, and this is up to you and your family. Where in your, in your home is it okay to use a Chromebook? Okay, Is it in the kitchen or the family room where it's a general setting? Why is that good? Because Kids are most less likely to make bad decisions in the words in an open space. They're more likely to make bad decisions where they have closed doors. There are cameras on the devices um, that kids can record videos, 
So we need to make sure that we're doing, being smart about those. You may want to think about at 10 o'clock or whatever time you say, Little Johnny gives Chromebook to mom or dad to keep till the morning. Maybe they charge a Chromebook in mom or dad's bedroom, so we have some parameters around that. Use the internet with your student to help develop a safe internet habits. Now, you as a parent also have use of the device when it's at home. Um, so, you know, you know, if you wanted to learn more about the specific subject, you have that ability as well. Talk to your kid about how they're using their Chromebook. Ask them, have those conversations. Look at what's being installed. Ask them what each program does. Do not hesitate to contact the school if you have questions or concerns about the, about the Chromebooks. Um, time on, um, just like you have rules around Chromebook, think about the phone as well. Instant messaging, social networks, online gaming, they have access to all those. So, again, keep those things out in the open so you can have those conversations. Parents should ask and know your student's personal username and password. Make your kid tell you their password. Get on your kid's email and check it. You're not violating their privacy. You're being a good parent and being aware of what your kid's doing. Check their browsing history. We're going to be using Chrome on the Chromebooks. Go to History, Show All History, and see what your kid's been looking at. If there's no history there, ask why. That's because your child has deleted the history. They've been doing something that you don't want them to do. <clears throat> Again, commonsensemedia.org. There are videos there for parents to, to set rules up for um, monitoring Internet use. Some Internet guidelines that you and your child both need to know. Never give out personal information. Never use your parent's credit card online. Do not share your passwords with, with anyone except your parent. That means don't give your buddy your email, uh, email password because you never know what they're going to do. They, they may be your best friend today, but tomorrow they're your worst enemy. Okay, so now once you've given them that information, you may be, may be your boyfriend today, but he may not be your boyfriend tomorrow. So be smart about that. Never arrange face-to-face -face meetings through people you meet on the Internet. You never know who you're talking to. If you don't know who sent you an email, don't open it. Do not click on pop-up banners or, or other ads on websites and never use bad language or threatening emails to people. because That is archived and we have it. Okay. Do not get into it with other students over school email. It's all record. We have backups of that. Anything you say or do can and will be used you in disciplinary actions. Social media. It is for the most part blocked on Knox County schools. Okay, um, be, know what your kids use, whether they're using Twitter, or Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Tumblr, Kick, whatever. There's a million things out there. Talk with your kids about the permanent digital footprint. Okay, once it's out there, it's out there and it can't come back. Okay, you send something to someone and they've got it and it may delete itself, but they can screenshot it, all that kind of stuff. Be alert to cyberbullying and notify schools immediately if it involves another student. And again, ask for your student's username and password for social media sites. Your child has no right to privacy until they move out of your home. Cyberbullying. Let's. Um, we're gonna watch a quick video on cyberbullying. We spend lots of time online. We text. We comment. We share. It's a big part of our lives. But communicating with someone online is just like talking to them in real life. Everyone appreciates politeness, and no one likes it when people make fun, spread gossip, rumors, or lies. The fact is, some people do try to hurt others online. It's called cyberbullying, and it's a lose-lose situation. It makes the person being harassed feel bad, and it makes the bully look bad. It might lead to trouble with school authorities or even the police. If someone's harassing you online, it's important not to respond. That's because bullies are looking for a reaction. Block them if you can. Ignore them if you can't. If it continues, save the evidence and ask an adult for help. And don't be afraid to stand up for yourself or to stand up for someone else being cyberbullied. This behavior usually stops pretty quickly when someone speaks up. And when you're communicating online, remember to treat people the way you'd like to be treated. Know how to handle yourself because being online is part of your life. So stop and think before you click.
little cheat sheet here on um, review for internet safety. The first one is the lock, which reminds you to keep everything locked and secure, including your passwords. The bar of soap reminds you to keep it clean. The toothbrush means to don't share your password and information because you don't want to share your toothbrush with someone else. The toothpaste reminds you that once you, once you put something out there, you can't take it back. Once you send that email or make that post, it's out there. You can't bring it back. And the permanent marker reminds you that your information on the Internet leaves a permanent footprint. I know that one of the first things I do when I hire new teachers is I search them on the Internet. And if I find something negative, I may not hire that teacher. All right, so some of the things that are prohibited for teach students to do is to try and bypass the school filter to go to websites they shouldn't be doing here on the, at the school. Should not be using a, a student's, another student's username or password. Do not share passwords. No downloading or installing apps that are not uh, recommended by a teacher. You should not be tampering with the hardware or visiting chat rooms, instant messaging, social networking, or hosting non-school approved web pages. Those are some big no-nos. Uh, one of the dangers of the internet is inappropriate material. Materials that are, we call anything inappropriate, it kind of has an, has an umbrella, which things are unacceptable in the school setting, including but not limited to pornographic, obscene, graphically violent, vulgar music, sounds, language, or videos, or other materials. We don't want those on our devices. We are here to use them for educational purposes. Do not download or transfer information or uh, files to an external drive. We do have some new discipline um, policies which go along with the Chromebooks. Uh, basically, we had these chunked down into four different levels of low level, medium level, medium high, and high level. And uh, consequences can go from... Um, ISS, to after, to after extended day detention, more digital citizenship training. We can move you to a day user if a student is just is regularly non-compliant with requests. We can move you to a day user so you can't take them home. Um, some of the bigger things are um, <clears throat> we can move to an uh, out-of-school suspension or even a disciplinary long-term suspension. Things like hacking into, attempting to hack into the uh, district's computer systems such as Aspen or sending threatening or harassing messages um, anything doing with pornography illegal activities you may um, become a day user or we may use you as you have to go back to paper and pencil itself we want to make sure kids are doing the right things with this our intention is not to to first take away the device because we use the we think of the device as an instructional tool not as a toy so um, if, we, if a student is misbehaving in class now, we don't take away their pen and paper, so we don't want to take away the device unless we have to move to that, that area. Uh, an overview for the rest of the night. You have completed step one when we finish the video of deployment. You'll then move down the fourth floor hallway downstairs to room 309 to get the device in the charger from Mr. James. Then you'll move down the back third floor hallway, down the back stairwell, and back around to the cafeteria to uh, have the student log into the device, make sure they can access it. Uh, they should have changed your passwords today or on Monday to, uh, to log in the device. Once you log in the device, you move to the back side of the cafeteria, sign off on the paperwork, and then give the paperwork to Ms. Han, uh, the yellow piece of paper to Ms. Han. Should you have chosen to become a day user, which is definitely your right, um, you will not get a device today. You, you can bypass the um, cafeteria section um, of the deployment, and you will go from here all the way down the third floor, follow that same line, but you will not stop to get a device. You will not go in the cafeteria. You'll go straight down the hallway, and she will write day user on the top of your, pay, on your yellow sheet, and you'll give that to her as well so we can keep a record of both full users and day users. Again, thank you very much for your support through this process. I look forward to, to what it can do for, in the, for our students' educations. Thank you, and have a good day.